Hello, beloved. It's me, Robin. Robin Hallett, intuitive healer and light sparkler at RobinHallett.com. And this is Tea with Robin. On today's episode, healthy mirroring on why it's important to allow ourselves to be seen, to receive support, and, you know, it's not easy to see yourself clearly if you're not allowing anyone to see you clearly. Plus, I'm sharing some beautiful books that have really helped me on the path, and we will have a beautiful letter from hashtag breaking the ties that bind. All this and more. Come grab a cup of yum yum and meet me here. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Robin. Welcome back to the podcast, Tea with Robin. This is episode 107. 107 for the win. Hi. Hi, friend. If it's your first time here, hi, it's me, Robin. Welcome. Hope this is a place that you will return and uh, and <laughs> you will return and again. <laughs> and, you know, I do really hope that this is a place you find lots of support and encouragement for yourself. And most of all, that you find out you are absolutely perfect exactly as you are. Friends, how is the weather in your heart today? Are you being kind and gentle with yourself? Are you practicing self-care? Are you allowing yourself to slide a little bit? Huh? I hope you are because there are so many things going on. It's hard to believe that all of us don't need a little more self-care and rest right now. I'm definitely feeling that way myself. Over here, it's a beautiful day. I'm recording this on a Saturday afternoon. I'm doing wonderfully well. It's been a beautiful week too. A lot of amazing healing sessions. And if I saw you this week, hello, and you're listening in real time. Hi. Hi, it's me. So it was so good to be with you. Um, and to you morning magicians on morning magic. Hey, hey, hey. We've had a big week. I feel like this has been a transformative week. And I don't know a lot about astrology, but I know we've had some planets moving themselves around. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say about that. You know, so much is shifting. So um, I'm, I'm excited to talk with you today. So what, before I get, get on a tangent about everything, let's have a cup of yum yum. I have some Earl Grey, some Stevia, and some sea salt. And I'm going to raise a cup of yum yum to you. Beautiful soul, you are perfect exactly as you are. Cheers. Oh, so good. So, <laughs> um, oh, before I, <laughs> wait, I don't know why I'm laughing because I want to say something serious. <laughs> um, you know, I'm so happy. The other day, a few friends of mine wrote that it was raining in Oregon and, a few of you were able to open your shops again. I'm so happy about that. I'm I'm glad to know that the fires are continuing to um maybe we're getting a little more caught up. I don't know how you say it. Like we're we're starting to get ahead of the thing now and even though <laughs> the skies are still it's going to take some time, but I am so happy to hear that things are starting to calm a little bit and that you're hanging in there. And I want you to know, I continue to pray for you every day, as do so many of us, because remember, we are in the world and we are amazing and we are adding our light and our hearts to this day with you and for you and you are not forgotten. So please know that. Also, you know, so many things happening, but yes, it's kind of a biggie that our amazing Ruth Bader Ginsburg made her transition. She is now rolling with the angels on the other side. 
And, you know, God bless her. God bless her. I just wanted to, you know, take a moment to say thank you for your your beautiful light. And, you know, we really need to trust in the energy of this is really a time where we have to stay in alignment with what we know to be true. And that is we are evolving more and more and more every day. People are, <laughs> that didn't sound right. I didn't mean everyday people. I meant every day there are more people awakening to this journey of community and connectivity and connection and, you know, awakening. And we need to trust and hold a vision. You know, it's best to avoid disaster thinking. And when we slip into that, we have to remember, A, who are you? You are a sparkler for God. <laughs> you are. That's who you are. And who am I? Same, 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 my friend. We are here adding our consciousness into the mix and things continue to get better. You have to hold that alignment. You do. I mean, I can't tell you what to do, I guess, can I? But please trust that things are continuing to get better. Because this world is full, like I keep saying it and I'm going to say it till I don't want to say it anymore. <laughs> this world is full of people like you and me. We are here. And have you seen us? Do you know our hearts? Yes, we've got this. We've got this. So, you know, I think it's important to be mindful of who you allow into your mind and your heart and your psyche, who you learn from, who you learn with, who you read, who you follow. It's important now. And, you know, also that every day we're sharing some light ourselves. That's my, anyway, my mission is serving and shining and loving and yeah thank you for being somebody who's here receiving so friends today I thought I would just riff with you a bit not just oh I thought I would riff with you a little bit about what I've been seeing in the healing room and what I've been seeing in um, our conversations in morning magic and I hope that I don't sound redundant you know, but uh, <laughs> things are changing. <laughs> things are always changing and you are evolving too. You are evolving. I would be deeply concerned if there was no change in you whatsoever. You know, you know what I'm saying? So how have you been finding the emotional journey this week? How have you been finding your own inner process? Are you noticing places where the work is happening for you on a deeper level? And what do I mean by that? Issues that maybe you've had all this time are starting to feel like you can't, you can't deny it anymore. You can't pretend anymore. Um, stuff's coming to a head that didn't used to be a problem. You're seeing it in a new way. I'm hearing so many relationship stuff happening. Codependent issues where the person who has been so afraid and locked into the dance is finally realizing, I don't got to do this anymore. <laughs> no more. Don't got to do it. So we're making moves. So give yourself a moment and see how have you been doing? What are the repetitive things? Who are the players in your life where these issues are coming up? Um, yeah, I'm finding that for me, you know, I am working right now with my wizard. That's my healer. I call her the wizard. I'm working with her every week right now. And I know a lot of you are in therapy, etc, etc, etc. Um, it's important. We need to give ourselves the space to explore for us what's going on for us and to have somebody's help in helping us unpack 
and hold space for us. It's not really easy to hold the mirror. It's not really easy to see yourself clearly if you're not allowing anybody to see you clearly. You know what I mean? A mirror is an important thing. So hopefully you have a friend or a mentor or a somebody that you let in occasionally, even a journal can be an amazing source for that. If you're somebody who feels deeply, thinks deeply, enter energies deeply, we need a healthy mirror. We need mirroring. And I'm not here making any case for anybody seeking healing who isn't. I can already feel the, the, (laughs) some of you will be alone and on your own. And you know what? That is the right thing for you. And this is where we have to know what's right for us. I so support and celebrate your way. So I just want to make sure I have that. I say that a few times because I'm not saying everybody has to do it. I'm saying those of us who feel like we are in areas of familiar things, challenges, familiar, you know, I talk a lot about Aunt Bertha around here these days. You got that one family member who kind of makes you cuckoo bird and you don't know what to do and you keep throwing yourself under the bus and giving all your time and your energy or allowing things to continue even though you know uh, you don't want to, you know it's not good for you and you know you don't want to do it. That's the perfect example where we want a little help, healthy help, supportive help, loving help. And it it can definitely be a trusted friend or your own journal. Okay. So (laughs) just wanted to say that one of the things that regularly blows my mind when I'm talking to friends or on morning magic, which, hey, that's a free thing I do every day. 30 minutes to an hour every day. And you are welcome to join us. It's Instagram live, 9 a.m. Chicago time. There's the deets. Um, and the replays go to YouTube. We're becoming a family there, a family, a community of supportive friends walking together, like hearted friends. And you are welcome. It blows my mind the way our distorted thinking, because we grew up in a way um, well, for lack, I know it's going to sound like a sweeping generalization, but I believe a lot of us grew up blaming ourselves for failures and the brokenness of our parents or whoever raised us or the situations we were in. If things were going down, if there was trauma for us, we blamed ourselves. Um, we blamed ourselves. And so that urge to get help, that urge to talk to people, it's often cloaked in a sense of shame as well, because it's just like somehow this thing all rolls together. Um, Yeah, so I was saying it blows my mind how hard it is for people to believe me when they tell me, I know I shouldn't say this. And then they tell me the most beautiful truth, the healthiest truth about how things are supposed to be, how things should work. Like, for example, that other people don't have the right to butt in on how you're living your life or how you're raising your family or how you've decided to take care of yourself or handle your COVID boundaries. If you've got somebody in your life who's difficult, I find that we tend to feel bad when we want to say this person is difficult. They are difficult to be around. They are a challenge for me. The strongest people will crumple while they're trying to tell me that stuff. They'll add in these little fillers like God help me, or I know I shouldn't say this, but um, hey, you can say it. You get to say it. It has to come out. It has to come out. You can say it. 
You matter. You are at the center of your own heart. You matter. There are so many things that friends will say to me that I'm like, you are, don't feel guilty for that. Don't apologize for that. That is actually the right thing. Your healthy inner knowing is speaking to you here. Um, but I might as well, they might as well be thinking I'm saying the exact opposite thing. So one of the practices we often do is trust how you feel. Pay attention to the way you're feeling in your body. Learn to look for the familiar sensations. You can study yourself. You can study your reactions. You can study the way you feel. You can learn to place your hands on your chest and breathe slowly. Exhale slowly and study what's happening for you. I talk about the sports announcer sometimes, the inner sports announcer. You can you can mentally announce to yourself, okay, so-and-so said this to me. I'm having this experience, you know, and then sense in your body so that you start to learn before you allow just your mind to run away with the whole thing. And usually that's really just your intellect and, or the ego mind. I really don't want to take my information from those places only about things like this, where I'm trying to wake myself up. I'm trying to learn how to guilt. Um, I used to have a teacher who would say to me, Robin, Guilt is a sign that you're on the right track. I still want to throw my shoe at his head, honestly, because what the hell does that even, oops, what does that even mean? (laughs) Guilt is a sign that you're on the right track. But over the years, I can say, yeah, as I'm learning to unwind from my own wackadoodle upbringing, if I feel the feelings of guilt today because I'm setting a boundary or I'm saying I'm acknowledging my needs first. I'm taking steps that are supporting my journey and those old feelings are going to come up like guilt to try and corral me back into place the way I used to roll. You know, does that make sense? So if this is resonating for you, let's try a powerful truth. Like nobody has the right to tell me how I should be living my life. Nobody has the right to, I mean, if you're an adult, you know, I'm not talking to you Um, (laughs) five-year-old. The truth will resonate in your body. Sometimes it will blow you away. It'll be such a strong thing where you claim your, you claim your permission to speak how it really, really is for you for the first time, it will overtake your body in such a powerful way. Those of us who have the right, are reclaiming ourselves and our power and our, um, you know, I'm not going to go around apologizing for who I am. This is me. This is me. This is me. It, you will feel something powerful in your body. You'll also feel a sense of resentment when somebody's trying to run you over for the 811th time. That one person in your life who continues to not see you, continues to not respect you, continues to devalue who you are. Um, You know, those conversations that fall into politics and it's just all, there's no respect for your where you're at, what you know. So I've been really um, working in my sessions with in my own personal sessions with going a little bit deeper and <laughs> letting my wizard in. It is not easy. Just like it's not those of you who work with me, it's not always easy to let me in a little bit more to share honestly about your experience. And here's what I got to say, when we trust that we are being held in love, amazing things happen. I mean, 
that's been my experience. So some of the things that I've been working on, and I'm noticing this too in the sessions I offer, is my inner child trauma. My inner child stuff. I think the inner child work gets a really crummy rap. And I've been watching some different people on YouTube who have been poking fun at inner child stuff. And so just because I want to, I don't know, I had this thing where I want to expand my vocabulary this week because a few people gave me a hard time about the way I speak and the words I use. That this woo-woo language I sometimes use is not, you know, like, I don't know, it doesn't seem to have any weight to it. Well, so I started listening to a few other people, not because I really think I have to change, but I want to hear how other people talk. And believe me, I'm not really struggling with self-confidence around this. It does get under my skin sometimes. Um, and I think that's just, you know, I'll be really honest for a moment here, <laughs> like usual, but sometimes think about this. You spend your life building yourself up with earthly credentials. And you have a powerful position or powerful job. You're really identified with all of these smarts so to speak. You are some, you feel like I am somebody. Sometimes I find that people like that who've been very successful in business or very successful in the world, you know, they, that's part of their identity. And those are usually the friends who will give me this advice, like, you know, you got to tone down your woo or you got to, if you want to, you know, you speak too plain or it's too vague, you know, or whatever. So it's interesting. I don't really take it personally. I think it's more of a thing like, I want to help myself see what really is my way of explaining things. And I want to learn how do other people explain things. So part of that is let's do some research and see what these other people who you know, they don't talk about woo the way I do. What, how do they talk about stuff then? And so, well, I'm going to stick with me. That's what I have to tell you about that. Um, I will just continue to be me and those other peeps are free to be them. Um, (laughs) that's it. That's all there is to it. Except to say, okay, because you know, I have more to say about this. (laughs) You know, we do, some of us do carry this thing about I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not erudite. (laughs) My language isn't whatever. Listen, it's so important for us to show up as ourselves. We have to represent our sliver of the universe. We're here to shine as us. We're here to help free our friends who are still hostage to their own wounded selves, you know, we're here to keep showing up. So even if you have some friction, and even when I get some of that feedback from, you know, it's, I really do feel it's well meaning advice. It's well meant. But uh, no, you stay yourself. Stay you stay who you are, stay yourself. It's important. People are counting on you to be you. And also, The Course in Miracles, right in the preface, it talks about how there are thousands of ways, thousands of teachings and paths to take to come to your own clarity, to wake up, to come to that place. And so each of us represents an aspect of one of those many multitudes, you know, you don't change, don't change. Especially don't change for somebody who's criticizing you, please don't do that, you know. Um, so yeah, you know, in my little recon, which I don't really do a lot of recon. <laughs> but I, I do think it's interesting. I do want to hear and I love listening to Russell Brand's um, Under the Skin podcast. I don't subscribe to Luminary. I watch on on YouTube. 
I love hearing how he discusses and the repartee, you know, between he, his guest and himself. And, um, you know, it's so fascinating. But also, don't change. You are you, and that is on purpose. So when people make fun of things like affirmations or inner child stuff, you know, that's their way. And the people who don't want to practice that for whatever reason or aren't comfortable with that, they're following that way. But you got to go, you know, your own way. Am I making sense? I hope so. But I did notice a lot of jokes about the inner child work. Here's the thing I want to say is I don't know anybody who got out of childhood feeling completely intact. Do you? Really? Um, there's tons of people who had it easier, better, whatever uh, than you. And tons of people who probably had a much diff- more difficult experience. You know, maybe your experience wasn't as intense as other people's. It doesn't really matter. We really shouldn't compare like that. You are you. And whatever is happening for you is happening for you. And honestly, I hear the comparison thing a lot. And the most, the significant thing I want to share with you today about that is that when we're interested in comparing, when we're comparing, when we're saying, well, it wasn't as bad for me, or we're saying my experience was worse than theirs, or we're saying I don't have a right, you know, what do I have to cry about? It wasn't that bad. Do you know what I'm getting at? There's resistance here. And that means we need to look. We need to look. Because we're doing something other than sitting with the inner child who needs to be sat with right now. Does that make sense? I've been in so many circles where people are like, oh, you know, um, I remember somebody years ago who was like, you know, we all went around the circle and shared about this stuff. And all I could think of is, Nobody here has it as bad as I did, had it as bad as I did. Nobody here um, experienced the type of loss I experienced. And I said, you know, that might be true for you. That is certainly not true for anybody else sitting in their center experiencing their experience. Right? And... Why are you choosing to do that instead of allowing yourself to be helped? Also interesting question. And these are the kinds of things you don't find out if you're not with somebody or a friend or journaling or, you know, holding this willingness to get underneath what's going on, you know. If you're just continuing on in your own stuff, on your own and alone and upholding the story like you can't, you shouldn't, you don't want to go there, you shouldn't talk about it, it's not good to get help, all of that, um, you might not see as clearly, as quickly what you're awake, being asked to awaken to. The stuff we deal with now, the stuff we wobble with now, will always have some roots back. One way or another, to the inner kiddo, to your to your childhood, to times when you were alone, um, times where you felt like you were alone, times where you felt like you got in trouble and you didn't know why, you know, you didn't understand, times where you felt like Nobody got you. Nobody had your back. You know, um, I'm not trying to talk anybody ever into feeling sad or upset. But what I notice is that a lot of us, the strong ones, that's us, the strong ones, the sparklers, the helpers are also the strong ones, meaning we shoulder a lot on our own. We take care of a lot for ourselves on our own. We read books and study that way on our own. 
And it's harder to let people in. It's harder to let people see us, to let people um, support us and love us and trust that we are going to be held and supported. And it, it does take time to find people who really get you. And you have to change sometimes. You have to change people, don't you? So, you know, that happens in my healing practice too, that I, with some people, we get to the end of, you know, we work together for six months or 10 months, and sometimes we work together for a year, and then we're done. And we make a change. So I changed healers. I had one that I worked with and adored and just really felt so met and seen and for about eight years. And then all of a sudden, it was like I was done. And I couldn't go any further. It really felt that way. And, you know, she pushed me out of the nest, I got to tell you, which I kind of still really say thank you to her for that, even though it was painful. We've gone as far as we can go together. And I, um, you know, we just started repeating things, which didn't feel helpful. So what I'm working on right now in my healing sessions with my wizard, and this goes out to you, my strong friends, Come along with me, you know, listen to this, listen to what I'm saying today. And where does this apply to you? Number one, number two, what is your story about your um, making space for your feelings? What is your story about receiving help? How do you allow yourself to be helped? Do you allow yourself to be helped? Do you feel embarrassed? or ashamed if you need help. You know, there are still, you can be you in your life there doing your things and maybe you get help, but there are still so many of us who feel deeply ashamed about receiving help. And if that's true, please know we need to work on it <laughs> because you matter and help is necessary. Very necessary. Very, very, very necessary. So what I'm working on now with my wizard is getting that felt sense in my body. Feeling the sensations in my body about what's going on now. Getting that felt sense in the body for things instead of asking just my intellect for its memory of things. And why does that matter? Why would we want to feel into the body um, and not just think about everything? Because A, like I said before, you did not get out of your childhood completely intact. Stuff lingers. We will always be walking this path. We will be always making our way. As long as we're alive, we will be discovering and uncovering and learning and teaching, helping others. So this is a skill we can acquire. And, you know, I, I do feel I'm amazing I'm to, and dedicated to my journey. I'm really proud of the work. I have done personally my growth. This is a new place where I am learning how to discover, oh, this is what anxiety feels like in this body. Where else did I carry this anxiety? How did I learn to adapt this way as a small kid? And stories are coming that I haven't remembered in this way, you know, so things come forward to be addressed and held from before. And I see how they do impede the flow today. So today, you know, if that person is critiquing me about my language or the way I talk, you know, I can stay in a place of um, 
curiosity and wonder about the feelings in my body that are coming up and I can stay present with myself and know, you know, there was a time where if I didn't do what somebody else told me to do, you know, I would be a bad girl, you know, this feeling of I would be in trouble, I wouldn't be, I was afraid I wouldn't be loved. And so today, if that feeling arises, I can hold myself, I can breathe with me, instead of feeling like, oh, I in order to be loved, I need to change my language. So these two people who are giving me this feedback um, will still love me. You know, does that make sense? No, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do that. But there is a little kiddo who wants to be set free, who did have to change, who had to keep morphing, you know, um, who had to do the right things or there would be trouble. Trouble, I say, trouble. (laughs) There will be trouble. So let me keep conforming or I will be cast out. So these feelings... What does it feel like? What happens in the body when this comes? It's so very important. And this is just this little move. Receiving your own feelings is huge. A lot of us are only from the neck up. We're alive from the neck up. We're thinking We're planning, we're processing, we're um, considering, but there's a whole other thing going on below the neck (laughs) called the body, the nervous system, and we deserve spacious presence. We deserve that curious wonder. You know, we deserve this time to sit with the feelings And instead of asking the mind, why am I like this? Why can't I feel anything? Why? Spend some time. Place a hand on the heart and breathe. And explore. Really, what does it feel like to be you in this situation? And where have you felt this way before? The mind can do its dance. The mind can say, oh, you baby. My mom used to call me a baby. Oh, come on, you baby. Don't be a baby. Don't be a sissy. You know, this and that. So my mind will still say it. You know, even now a little bit, I can hear this voice saying this is a dumb episode because I'm talking about sissy things. (laughs) You know, it's wild. Did you know not everything your mind thinks is true. It's wild. Did you know that thoughts occurring in your mind are not you? It's just a question. This is why I have to practice. This is why I need my wizard because (laughs) I tell you what, I go through stuff and I can go to cuckoo town if I'm not careful. You know, when Especially when I get that feedback that sounds like Robin is a bad girl. As I'm going through challenges that I don't particularly enjoy. (laughs) Particularly enjoy. This week I had, you know, things. I talked about this last week too. I said, (laughs) you know, when people get mad at me and um, or, you know, push back against me and several, several people thought I was talking about them. So I had a bunch of emails, a bunch of conversations to have. And I realized like, you know, this is so good because I have to deal with some conflict stuff and stay present in my own heart and know my goodness and not be afraid, you know, and I can say for sure. And thank you. Hi. Hi. You're probably listening. (laughs) Thank you so much for your courage and bravery to send me emails and say, Robin, were you talking about me on episode 106? I'm worried you were. I admire that so much. I really do. Here's an insider thing about me and Jeff. That's number one. 
He's like, you know, I know you always say you respect the truth, even if it's difficult, you would rather hear the truth, but it is something that is so hard to trust. And I'm like, yeah, but I do respect when people tell you their truth, even if it's, you know, like this, where it's, it feels conflictual, you feel scared, you know, it feels like, uh oh, are we in, in a problem here? Are we having a conflict? Are you mad at me? I love that those of you who wrote felt comfortable and safe asking, checking it out with me. And one of the friends I had this conversation with, you know, she said, I get a little paranoid that you're talking about me. And then I realize even if you are talking about me, this is still good. Good is coming out of this. We're growing and changing and you don't change without friction. You know, you don't have any impetus to seek help or seek, you know what I'm saying? If there isn't a reason. So all I can say is thank you and bless you. And I'm so glad it's us, you know, and uh, even when I get criticized about my, the way I talk, you know, my words, amaze balls, amaze balls. <laughs> I love it, but I do sometimes get it. And like the person who this week kind of criticized my language and the way I talk and, you know, I just have to keep practicing knowing who I am, coming back into my center and knowing who I am. And, you know, I, I grew up being teased. I grew up being criticized. I grew up with those experiences where you get invited to the party and then you find out later they just invited you so they could have somebody to pick on all night, you know, to make fun of. So I would say I've spent a lot of time expecting to be treated like that as an adult. I mean, it's only natural. You know, if you don't heal, if it's, if you're too embarrassed to talk about some of this stuff, which I was a lot of times, I was too embarrassed to talk about these things about myself in therapy or healing. I didn't want to address it. So if you're too embarrassed to address it, you really don't allow yourself to be seen. And so you don't have a mirror for yourself that is reflecting the light of God back to you is what I'm trying to say the truth of who you are back to you and helping you understand who you truly are. It's difficult then. So you know, just for today, your practical tips. Number one husband sometimes encourages me to offer some practical tips. Here's my practical tip for you love. Keep placing a hand on your body keep breathing. When you feel stressed, when you feel pressed, when you feel struggly, give your body, give your nervous system some time to speak to you and then let yourself go ahead and look back. I wonder when else I have felt this way. I have helped so many friends when I can say, let's really tune into how you're feeling now and then let me know. Can you find another time in your life where you felt this way? Everybody nods, yes. Everybody finds another time. And that is like we've just entered the stargate. We have just stepped through the portal and now we can go anywhere. Everything is opening for us. So start there. That's the practical tip. Start there, you know. And this is you receiving help. This is you doing something other than thinking about it in a closed loop that has no oxygen. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, okay. So may that serve you today. I hope it does. And I'm always here to hold your hand if you'd like to try some of this or come to Morning Magic and see what it's like to allow yourself to be held and loved, you know? It matters. I'm so happy to see the world today. It, more and more people know it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to receive help, especially since COVID and Black Lives Matter and all the tumult, you know, all the stuff. We 
it is getting more into the psyche. It's okay to be helped. Cheers. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. So every now and then you like to hear some book recommendations that I have. One that comes back to me, I felt was a very powerful read um, is The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. Super, super helpful. Uh, It's a very fast read. In fact, I waited in line down at Loyola (laughs) waiting to get in to the building to see the Dalai Lama speak. Long, long line. I read the whole book standing in line. (laughs) It's a fast read. And you may even be able to just listen to it through the library app or Hoopla or Lucy. What's that other one called? So that's one. And the other one I really love is called Beyond Codependency. And you might not think you by uh, Melody Beatty, I'm pretty sure, or Pia Melody. Anyway, Beyond Codependency, I'll put it in the show notes. And in the show notes, I have a people sometimes email me and say, can you recommend a book? I have an entire list. Every book I ever recommend here on the show is in the show notes every single week, the link to the database of stuff I've recommended over the years. So robinhallett.com slash 107. Beyond Codependency is such an amazing book because it's already assuming you know the basics and it's not talking to you about things you've probably done 180 million times already and healed and you're in a new place and you just need to know how do I function today knowing what I know? How do I keep moving forward through the portal, you know, living my life fully out, you know, um, I don't need the old, all the other early lingo. I've done that part. I need to know how to cope. Am I normal? You know, so and so said this to me. And this is I felt like a wild animal for 10 hours. Is this normal? What do I do with this? I love that book for that. So those are two. And um, her original book, Codependent No More. If you're like, oh, I don't know the ins and outs of codependency. Codependent No More is where it's at. So, so helpful. And, you know, just again, it's good to help yourself. Number one, husband really loves the the wisdom of the Stoics. So he reads um, Marcus Aurelius. He reads Epictetus. And it's powerful there. So you may, I'll put some of the books he loves there too. It's just, you know, let yourself be helped. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. So that's the inspiration today. And um, yeah. So friends, here comes the part where I love to ask you to support the podcast. There's a number of ways. One is to leave a review. And I love reading your reviews. Thank you so much. Leave a review on the podcast platform you listen to. Um, Two would be to share this episode if you like it. That is, share it on. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Instagram. Share it in your stories. Email it to a friend. And three would be to make a donation. Support the work. Um, Buy me a cup of coffee. I always love that. I appreciate that. Um, and also supporting the work means doing the work, right? Doing, taking what you're listening to today and actually applying it in your life, what resonated for you, um, and helping other people that it would be resonant for too. If you thought of somebody, share some of these nuggets you take away that feel true for you share them on with your friends you know I know I said it before but it's like this is why we don't have to be afraid that the world is going off the rails you know we're here we're amazing we're dedicated so let's keep that light burning in our hearts (laughs) yeah 
Reminds me of that summer camp song, Sleep Away Christian Summer Camp. So, mm, but give me oil in my lamp. Keep it burning, burning, burning. <laughs> give me, was it? Give me oil in my lamp. I pray hallelujah. I always like that part. <laughs> yeah. And, and that reminds me, I'm a little remiss in wishing you a beautiful Rosh Hashanah. Happy New Year, Shana Tova, and the beginning as we're making our way into the 10 days of awe leading up to Yom Kippur. So beautiful. So thinking of you, celebrating you, and Happy New Year. Yeah. Beautiful. So this week's letter, um, before I read it, I wanted to thank you. I wanted to say thank you. I love that it seems like lately you have been reaching out in all the ways you can to let me know that these episodes, especially the last three or four, have really been resonating for you. It feels like there's this community spirit we're building and answering the question of how can we be connected? How can we stay connected in these times? And it really feels like as I've been sharing my own stuff going on more, um, you've been coming closer to let me know that it matters to you, that what I do matters to you. Um, Some of you leave me voicemails on Instagram just telling me how much my work has helped you. Um, Some of you write funny little messages (laughs) saying how how many kooky coincidences there are and the things I'll share. And it all means so much to me. Thank you. Um, Weirdly, I'm a little shy about reading you know, those flowy, lovey letters here. It's not weird. It's just, you know, those are for me. And I want you to know I keep them in a special folder on my phone. Um, Sometimes I screenshot comments you leave. I keep them on my phone. And I revisit when needed. Because I know, like I was saying before, my own mind is not always the best (laughs) uh, view on reality. It's true. So we're always doing this work. We're always waking up. And I just wanted to tell you, you matter to me. And I appreciate your support, your kindness. Um, We are changing. We are growing. And part of that is just you stepping in with me, staying with me. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And this week's letter comes from a friend in our love posse. Another, um, I said this last week, another one of those. Sometimes I write a newsletter every Wednesday. You can subscribe. The link will be in episode 107 if you go to robinhale.com slash 107. Um you can subscribe and I'll send you this happy mail on Wednesday mornings too. But a lot of these letters start out as a response to the letter I sent out. So this is another one. I mentioned this last week um, from the letter I wrote called True Blue to You on August 12th. I don't know if you save them. I'm not saying you have to save my letters. I didn't say it. Some people do. That's what I hear. (laughs) I save my letters. Um, That's so funny. I do save my letters. I like to reread sometimes. So this comes from Jane, and thank you, Jane, because, you know, I wrote you back and said, hi, can I read this on the podcast? And you were like, yeah. So I appreciate it so much. Morning, Robin. Thank you for your email. Yes, lately, I have been saying no. No, I am tired of being called only when someone needs something. It upsets me a lot of late. They don't call and ask how I am 
or do I need any help with anything? And this makes me feel sad and hurt. I ask for very little, but it is seemingly very difficult to have the help when I could use it. So, at the moment, I'm going through my mind and heart, sorting and sifting through the debris. So hopefully I will feel better when that job is completed. Some lessons sure do take a long time to learn, don't they? Best wishes to you, Robin. Jane. You know, and in the letter, one of the things that I, I said, um, I hear a lot of stories about guilt trips and other kinds of bad juju that come from our trying to be the good and loyal friend or the good and loyal child to a parent or, you know what I'm saying, like the good and loyal one, just trying to do the right thing or the easier thing or the nicer thing. And, you know, you end up feeling like you're being crapped on and it can make you feel bitter. It can make you feel upset. And I know loads of people who I could almost write the script of what they're going to say to me when these buttons get pushed. And, you know, that's not a compliment, really. It's saying we all have places where we get stuck. And then we go into um, those jaded statements like the world, you know, like I said last week, the world, shame on America, shame on the world, shame on us. No, let's not do that. Let's not say, you know, let's not keep making those statements that are affirming that we're being crapped on. Because guess what? Guess what we're saying? Please crap on me. <laughs> I'm sorry. But please do it. Please take me for granted. Please use me up. Please. You know? And I love us. I care too much to even be afraid that somebody's going to get mad at me for saying this, even though I feel afraid. We bring it on ourselves. We teach people how to treat us. I have taught people how to treat me. And, you know, this is for Jane. This is for you, Jane, but also for all of us, because I know a bajillion of us right now, we're nodding our heads, aren't we? We know that friend who treats us like that. We know that one who uses us all up and comes back for seconds and thirds and fourths and has no problem asking for more and then not showing up. I mean, you know, I have, I have a friend who is terrible about responding, even though she's the one that initiates the reach out. She reaches out to me. How are you? Let me know how you're doing. I share something. And then the response that comes back is not a response. <laughs> it's like, oh, dang it. Here it is. This is just like how you get in the door and then you ask for what you need. This person asks for what they want. No, we have to learn. We have to keep learning. We have to keep staying alert. And part of that is um, in our own bodies, how does it feel in your body? I still to this day can recall the feeling of resentment, learning that resentment lives in my body. It lives in my belly to be specific. It lives in my belly. And I, I just because I'm talking about it, I'm tuning to it. I feel it in my high heart as well. So this like breastplate, I don't know what it's called above your <laughs> stop don't say it you know what I'm saying above above the girls let's just say it that way the bone there yeah <laughs> oh man anywho I feel it there and resentment is the energy of resentment I used to feel it and be so upset. And then I would give the person what they wanted anyway. So it had become my training to feel the feeling and then run myself over, take advantage of myself. But I would say other people were taking advantage of me. But it's really, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to set a boundary. I didn't know I mattered. I didn't know 
I was worthy of a life that didn't involve being resentful and doing things begrudgingly and counting up the number of people who let me down. I didn't realize that I was creating the exact stuff I didn't want by focusing on it. And this is why I feel sometimes the courage to keep going, even though I have long as a healer, again, more insider tips here. (laughs) As a healer, I have long known that it is scary for me to help to challenge people's victim mentality. Um, To say, no, mm -mm, this is not right. You cannot keep saying this. You know, I'm encouraging you to not keep saying this. This is why I'm overcoming those fears because we can't keep doing this to ourselves because people will take us for granted. They will take advantage of us. Um, if I, I could tell you how many letters I get, I, I got two new letters this week about loaning money to people now in COVID who um, don't pay it back. And it's like, you know, but the people who don't pay it back that's about them. But what's your part in this? You know, what's your part in this in allowing yourself to be taken for granted? Because that's the only interesting part. That's the only part that's worth looking at. Um, so it's so good to notice. I feel sad and hurt. Like Jane says, I feel sad and hurt. That is the best thing you could notice about the situation. Where does it live in your body? So for me, that resentment belly and my high heart. When else have I felt this way before? Who have I felt this way with? Where has this come up before? Maybe some regular players, the cast of characters in your life will pop into your mind. Hmm. Is this really how I want it to be? You know, underneath, there needs to be this undercurrent of willingness. There needs to be an undercurrent of willingness to to your journey, even though, even if you want to fall face first in the mud, just collapse and scream and cry how it's not fair, how carpy people are, how horrible people are. You know, you want to fall into that energy of feeling sorry for yourself There's nothing wrong with that energy approaching. And even if you do a little bit of that, um, but don't let go of the underlaying willingness to rise and do your work because we are fierce. We are strong. We are fierce. We are strong and we're here to help each other. And, you know, honestly, you are here to show those very people something to be strong and hold the line to set a boundary to speak your truth you're here to help I am here to help I am here to share the light of the one who sent me this is from the course of miracles of of the divine the spark of the divine it's not your job to lift the world it's not your job to heal the world but you are on a path to do your work to grow, to shine, to grow, to evolve, and to help awaken the world. So we either fall into, you know, shame on America, that those people saying that kind of stuff, and just like, this is my license to give up. Or you have that energy of willingness, you want to help, you want to make a difference. You want to help your kids. You want to help your family. You want to help your neighbor, you know. So hopefully there is this underlaying willingness to keep walking. Um, So the sad and hurt energy, even if you want to fall in the mud and scream. I don't know why the mud, but yeah. Even if you want to lay down and scream, don't stop there wonder how this pattern got started. I wonder how I began. Where do I see myself the first time? 
offering kindness to others, expecting it in return, expecting to be asked how I am or do I need any help or is there anything I can do for you and the hurt way I feel when nothing comes. I've tried and tried and tried and nothing comes back and I feel sad and hurt. When was the first time? What do you remember? It's not pithy little you know, stuff. This is big, big stuff because trauma, and this could be strain trauma, you know, like just an ongoing situation in your childhood that just never really changed because people are who they are, right? I mean, it wasn't like my mom was a narcissist one time and said the one thing and then she never was that again. It was like the whole upbringing was like that. So strain trauma and This is something that I learned about myself. The sad and hurt feelings, the resentful feelings um, came out of that place where I tried so hard to get my parents to be interested in me, to love me, to remember me, to not leave me, to not abandon me. You know, long periods of time, they would leave me alone overnight sometimes. Um... There are no amount of favors or kindnesses or money you can loan somebody today that will make that little child in you not be abandoned. Whoa, (laughs) do you get that? There is no amount of friendship you can extend, goodwill, kindness, that will fix the past. So we need to use these situations as shadow angels, dark angels that are coming. These people are coming to help us heal, help us do our work. What work do you need to do? This is for Jane. This is for Robin. This is for all of us listening. So what do we need to do? Because let's not say this is just how it is. Some things will never change. Let's not do that. And this piece, I ask for very little, but it's seemingly very difficult to have help when I could use it. You know, this is not okay. It's not okay for you to allow yourself to live this way. And so, um, you know, you matter too much. And so I would say to you, right from that letter I sent, The loyalty we offer other people in that fearful, unhealed state where we run ourselves over, where we give our money away, where we give our time away, where we give our attention away, where we respond to text messages that it's just, it's, it's over. Stop responding. It's over. You know what I mean? That's loyalty offered in an unhealed state. It, it erodes our ability to receive our own heart knowing. You know, that's why we don't understand. We're chasing somebody else's approval. We're chasing somebody else's love. We're chasing somebody else's favor and somebody else's the pop being popular, being at the cool kids table. And you know what? It won't even work because the one who's seeking that is really looking for you really looking for you, not that other person. They're just a representation of the work you need to do. You know, I would love that we decide to have a policy to listen inwardly first and ask for the truth of how we're feeling. And like I say, a lot of times, all I feel is resentment. And that now, today, it can become your intuition. I feel resentment. I don't necessarily need to go into my upset about it. Resentment now is my signal that the answer is no. And I don't really even, you know, spend a lot of time figuring out why. I mean, I can tell it's over the top. It's too much. It's inappropriate. It's not right. You know, um, whatever. So listen inwardly 
and ask for the truth of how we're feeling. And when we feel that tug to give our loyalty from a fearful place, let's stop and ask, what am I seeking here? What am I looking for from this person? Am I afraid? Am I trying to avoid some kind of a blow up? Am I trying to belong, you know, to fit in at the cool kids' table? You know? Ask. You will always get an answer. I think, you know, the thing is we have to stop fighting it. A lot of us are attached to telling the story again and again and again and complaining and complaining and complaining. And just don't be that one who does that because there's a little kid in you who is waiting, looking up, waiting for you to notice him or her. Please pay attention to me. This is where the work begins. So, you know, friends... And the uh, let me say one more thing before I wrap that up. The last thing is, you know, when you realize you do have to sift and sort through the debris, there are people you need to move out of your inner circle. They do not belong on the inner circle. And even if they're your children or your parents, sometimes this is the adjustment we need to make. It's not an unkindness. This is sometimes the only way we will actually help anybody is by seeing it how it truly is. Um, Paul Selig and the guides, they talk about this a lot in all of his books. Don't lock people away in a dark cave in your own heart because they're bad, because they don't do it the right way, and they're selfish pigs, you know? What we damn damns us back. We end up attracting this energy again and again and again and again, and we keep working this story. So let's do the work. Um, Lately, I am really doing that. I'm I'm asking people to show up for me. And when they don't, if they really, really matter to me, I'm saying so. I'm telling them. I encourage you to do that. You know, and this is how I would say it. I want to be closer with you. I care about our relationship. And so I'm taking a risk. I'm letting you know how I feel. And I'm open to hearing what you What's going on for you? And then I would just lay it out. Come from the eye, you know? Don't be like you, 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 you. Try, I'm not always the best at this. Try not to say always and never. Um, I really love Marshall Rosenberg's book on nonviolent communication, by the way. And also, um, is it David Dida? How to be an adult in relationships. Holy smokes, friends. Again, all of these books I will are in the database of books I recommend for the podcast. Every show notes at the bottom has this link to it. Um, you know, we have to help. The days are over where we can just expect things to change with doing nothing. <laughs> That is wishful thinking, right? That, that Those days are over. We have to help ourselves. So if people matter to you, if you care, you got to speak up. And also, some of us need to push people out. That's just all there, all there is to it. So, you know, sometimes we learn the hard way. That's all, all it is. And we still have to learn that our investment... The love and the loyalty we've been investing in the wrong, in the direction that hasn't been serving us has been our greatest teacher. So if that resonates for you today, let's offer a gentle hallelujah and a thank you for this awareness. Let's celebrate this as a win if you're connecting some dots, you know, and now we can make the choice to honor the light inside our own hearts and to love ourselves, and to honor ourselves, and to, you know, let people be where they are. Sometimes the truth is, 
other people are just not that into us. And I don't know why we love those dry wells so much. But, you know, see it for what it is. There's a one in you insisting this person be your friend. And they keep telling you no in their way. A certain kind of friend you want from them. They keep saying, that I'm not that. I can't be this. I'm not that. I'm not there yet. You know, so. Yeah. May we all get the message. And again, thank you to Jane. Thank you, Jane, for saying yes to letting me read this here. And of course, I always tell us all, everything I'm saying is not just for one person. It's for all of us to share. So thank you. And friends, I would be so honored to read a letter from you. My email address is hello at robinhallett.com or you can hit reply to my emails or message me on Instagram. I always appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, that wraps an amazing episode. I liked it so much. Let's have a sip of tea. Cheers. Beautiful. It's a gorgeous, sunny, early afternoon Sunday. I am going to go find my gorgeous, sunny, beautiful husband. And it looks so warm and inviting outside. It's been really cold, like down to 43 at night, which is like yuck. Okay, yucky. <laughs> I think it's about 75 and sunny. So I'm going to drag some of those loungers we have wherever they are out to the yard and take a bag of books. You ever do that? You're like so ambitious. Here's a whole bag of books. I'm taking them outside. Make a tray of uh, iced tea and go enjoy the day. Celebrate my time. And I celebrate this time with you. And thank you for your beauty and your light and for being here, for doing this with me. Thank you, my friend. All right. This has been me, Robin. Super amazing awesome sauce amaze balls hallet <laughs> so much love to you i'll see you next week or in a few minutes same bat time same bat channel bye bye life is very short let's make the very most of it you are a precious gem and i love you do 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 we are here to shine and shine bright you are a gem and i love you do 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 life is precious and you are a spark of the divine so shine like you know it rock it like you mean it cause you really really mean it and mean it and mean it and mean it, and mean it. Don't let crispy people tell you that you aren't sparkly. Cause you are, cause you are, cause you are. Thank you. I like that. I love it, honey. Thank you. Give me a kiss.